Spring is over and summer has begun, so Dingle have released the next of their Wheel of the Year series. This week, let me tell you about the Bealtaine whiskey from Dingle. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt. I'm the whiskey nerd, and like I said, this week I'm looking at the Bealtaine whiskey from Dingle. So let me get it into the glass and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now, first off, what is Bealtaine? Well, to explain it, I'm going to go back a little bit to the rest of the Wheel of the Year series from Dingle. So it started off with the Samhain Festival, which is Halloween. Then it went to La the Brida, which is St. Bridget's Day in Ireland. And now we've got Bealtaine. These are all pagan fire festivals in Ireland signifying the change of the season. So whereas Samhain is the enter to winter, La the Breeder is the enter to spring, Bealtaine is the entry into summer and it has this connotation of kind of the world being alive again. The animals are driven out into the summer pastures to kind of live out there because they don't need to be sheltered. But in order to do this, they do have a fire festival in order to kind of purify and cleanse and protect the animals, the livestock, all the produce that they're growing on the farms. Those are kind of protected by a fire festival because it is summertime, it is the growing season, it's not yet harvest, so you do need to protect your livestock and that's why there is a fire festival marking Bealtaine, which is also sometimes called May Day. You might be familiar with May Day, it's typically the first of May in different countries. But that's all well and good talking about history. The important part is what's in the bottle. This is an Irish whiskey, obviously. It is a triple distilled, single pot still whiskey from Dingle. So Dingle are an Irish distillery. They're down in the Dingle Peninsula in Ireland, and they've been producing some very nice stuff. They've recently got their own stock matured for 10 years. So we're gonna see more and more good age statement whiskey releases from them but this right here is part of their wheel of the year collection which is going to be eight different bottles marking eight different kind of celtic or pagan festivals over the course of two years we've had two releases already and this is the third release in that series it is kind of focusing on different cask finishes that they have got at dingle so like i said it's a single pot still irish whiskey which means is a mix of malted and unmalted barley. I think Dingle go for about 50% malted barley and 50% unmalted barley, which gives you a lot of kind of caramel, rich kind of deep sweetness from that malted barley, but also kind of fresh, oily, lighter, kind of spicy notes from the unmalted barley. So it's a good kind of combination. It does give you a lot of flavor. Single pot still is the style of whiskey that's unique to Ireland. So kind of fitting that they're using it in this kind of wheel of the year celebration. It does come in at 52.5% alcohol. That's 105 proof if you use that measurement system. And it doesn't carry an age statement, but I have done a little bit of digging and I do know it spent the first five years of its life in ex bourbon barrels, which is gonna give you a lot of caramel, butterscotch, rich sweetness like that. And then it spent two and a half years in Australian Shiraz wine casks from the Toysner Vineyard in the Barossa Valley in Australia. So that's gonna give you darker fruit notes, maybe some kind of chocolatey spicy notes as well. So that's kind of seven and a half years on the whiskey, despite it not having an age statement. And already you can tell that two and a half years in the wine cask had a huge influence because it has this really rich kind of red color to it. And it does seem to have had a lot of influence on the whiskey. So let's go in for the nose on the Dingle Bealtaine and see how much of an influence that Shiraz cask has had. Cheers. Okay, immediately up front, there is a lot of that Shiraz influence. There's, it's kind of creamy and kind of rounded, yes, but there's a lot of berries up front, a lot of kind of darker, I'm getting like blackberries and dark cherries, really kind of rich, heavier dark fruits, if that makes sense. I wouldn't say I'm getting like raspberries or like strawberries, those kind of lighter, more summery. I'm getting more of those um, darker, richer, kind of heavier, dark berry influences. And that's all sitting on top of this kind of um, very rich base of like vanilla, custardy, kind of rich sweetness. It's It actually reminds me a lot of, there's a, there's a pastry we have here in Ireland, 
you might have it where you're from as well, called a maple pecan plat. I'll put a picture of it up there so you can see what it looks like. And it's a pastry like, with puff pastry around it, but the middle of it has this kind of maple syrup flavored kind of cream or kind of custard in it. And that's where I'm getting like, it's not just a vanilla custard. It's got this kind of caramelized maple syrup note coming through it as well. As I sit with it, I'm getting a little bit of pepper note, like a little bit of, um, Almost like a almost like a white pepper note coming through. It's not a very strong. It's behind those notes. Like that fruit is up front. That base of like vanilla, custardy, maple syrup, brown sugar. That kind of dark note is there. And then you get this little bit of pepper at the end. The more you sit with it. So I think it's time I go in for the palate. Cheers. That is very different on the palate. So on the nose, it was lighter it was that creamy note it was the berries it was those kind of lighter rounded notes but on the palate as soon as it hits you you get those pastel spices like i said i was getting a little bit of pepper on the nose the more i sat with it as soon as it touches my palate there it is there's those pastel spices you get the dark kind of almost like a cracked black pepper coming through the more i sit with it here but definitely up front it's oily it's rich it's still very sweet mind you definitely very sweet kind of like um kind of like candied cherries instead of those uh those fresh cherries i was getting on the nose so i'm gonna go in for another sip and see if i can explore that a bit more yeah it is still quite sweet on the palate like obviously you're getting that hit of spice you're getting a bit of the tingle from the abv it does have that little bit of abv heat coming through there coating the tongue, but those pastel spices round it out and let it kind of deliver a really nice note. And then you get, after the spices, you get those sweet notes. Like, like I said on the nose, it was those cherries, those kind of blackberries. On the palate, it's more like, um, if you know those maraschino cherries, again, I'll, I'll put a picture up there, those dark cherries that are covered in a really thick, sweet syrup, it's that kind of note. It's those kind of stewed dark berries, whereas the nose is much more fresh. The palate much more densely sweet that kind of note coming through as i'm sitting with it now i'm getting a little bit more of like almost like oak maybe a bit of smoke maybe a bit of like um maybe like espresso or something like that coming through but that's more about the finish so i think i'll go in for another sip i'm going to focus on the finish cheers okay again the finish does deliver something a bit different so the nose was quite light creamy fruity the palate quite spicy heading into darker territories the finish as you breathe it definitely leans in more to those darker notes like i'm getting some oak char i'm getting a little bit of like espresso or like really like really dark cocoa powder those kind of heavier notes are coming through it is quite a long finish i mean those lighter notes the fruity notes they do fade off but then it leaves you with this really long, kind of spicy, but more of that darker notes, kind of encouraging you to maybe go back to the pat to the nose, and that's what I'm gonna do now, and see if I can get those darker notes. And maybe it's just because I've you know I've tasted it now, I've gotten through my nose, I've gotten through my palate, gotten through the finish, but as I'm sn smelling it now, I'm getting a little bit of those darker notes. I'm getting a little bit of that oak char coming through. And that's one of the things I like about whiskeys. Now, don't get me wrong. I like whiskeys that kind of deliver a consistent profile across nose, palate, and finish. But one of the things about whiskeys, when they have kind of different attacks on the nose, the palate, and the finish, it means you can kind of go back to the whiskey and see if you can get those different notes in different parts of the whiskey. And that is here. So it is kind of an enjoyable experience to have a glass, sit down with it, get to know it, and kind of go back and forth and really enjoy the whiskey. One thing also to note about this Bielt and the release is that it's actually a much smaller release than their other releases. So the Sowen and the La Labrida whiskey releases from Dingle, they were about 10,000 bottles. This is only about five, five and a half thousand bottles being released worldwide. And I did a little bit of research before I started filming this video. A lot of the online retailers, at least in Ireland, a lot of the online retailers are already fully sold out. So where you are you might be able to get a bottle like it, it only was released on the 1st of may so 
the allocation for your store might not yet have arrived or it might be on a boat coming to you depending on what part of the world you're in but I do think this one will sell out pretty quickly just because of the limited number of bottles in the release. So if you are a collector, if you're trying to collect the entire series like I am, I'm definitely gonna have a bottle of each of these whiskeys and I'm saving at least half a bottle of each of the other ones so I can try all eight whiskeys against each other when I do have the full collection. But if you are a person building that collection, definitely try and get a bottle as soon as it's released because they will sell out. They already have sold out in a lot of places in Ireland. So I'm gonna be very gentle with this. I'm gonna enjoy it slowly and I'm gonna really take my time and enjoy it. I won't be making a cocktail with this whiskey this week because of the limited kind of release nature of the whiskey, but I will have a different whiskey cocktail featuring a very nice whiskey this Friday. So if you wanna see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I put out whiskey reviews on Wednesdays and I put out cocktail recipes featuring whiskey on Friday. So if you wanna see that, make sure you hit subscribe. And while you're down there, maybe leave me a comment and let me know what kind of whiskeys you'd like to see me review in the future. But until next time, I'm gonna enjoy this and I will see you then. Sláinte.